Good afternoon. We're going to do two cleansing breaths and we're going to start our awards presentations. With me, inhale, hold, release. Do that one more time. Fill them up. Release. That's good. This is the moment where we recognize student achievement publicly for awards they've earned based on merit. The public praise is part of our culture, part of this world-class organization, and we are a world-class organization because you're here. You're part of it. So I'd like all of you to please stand and greet your neighbor with a handshake and a hello. Do it now. So our, our first order of business is to present our new student council president with her burgundy blazer. So we're going to do that momentarily, and you guys can clap at the end after she's been given that blazer. But I first would like to call forward our seventh head of school, Mr. John Monroe. Come on up here, Mr. Monroe. So glad you're here. So about a week ago, Mr. Monroe and I were in touch pretty regularly. I, I called him. I said, look, we're putting you in charge of the weather for graduation. I'll take, I'll take full responsibility. You're doing great. So I'd like all of our former student council presidents to please join us on the stage now. A number of them are here. I'd like to invite Eric Halls, who is the president of our alumni association, to please come forward. I would like our current president and vice president to please come forward. And I would like our president-elect and vice president-elect, I would like both of them to please come forward and gather on the stage. Mr. Loriana, you look so good. I know you wore this every day in college. So proud of the colors. So this is an important moment. Josie, you're going to be our vice president. Noel is going to be our president. We're going to have our current vice president, Rain, if you would please get the blazer. The tradition comes from the Juliana family. They've endowed this blazer. Two former students, Nick and Sam, were presidents, class of 14 and class of 16. So, Rain, you have to train Josie how to do the finger holding. Are you knuckles up or knuckles down? Knuckles up, knuckles up of course. All right, so at this moment, turn over to our vice president. And now I'd like our current president, Mr. Burris, if you would please take that off of the hanger. And we're going to ask you to uh, gently hand it to Mr. Monroe. And Mr. President, if you would please help our president-elect with her Navy blazer. There you go. And so, Mr. Monroe, this is going to be your student council president. You're in great hands. I present to you our next student council president, Noel Friel. Way to go. If, Mr. Monroe, if you need any help with learning how to use all those keys we gave you last month, She's got you. All right, you're out. Goodbye. Thank you guys so much. Okay. Noel will be uh, sworn in first day of school on a deck of RL cards as tradition. There are so many reasons why I love the Gao School. 
And it's about community, the togetherness, the empowerment to students, to parents. And by the way, parents, we know the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. These are your people. And so if you're a former student in college and you come back to visit tomorrow, or if you're an adult thriving in your career, this is a place where you were given the empowerment to be successful, to be in charge of your future. It's great to recognize students selected by our department chairs for academic achievement. Tomorrow, I'll formally recognize our faculty, but let me tell you, I've been lucky enough to work at three schools across this great nation for students with dyslexia and learning disabilities. The teachers that work here, there are no finer. Think about it. We teach here, we coach here, we run the dorms, we run the study hall, we're at meals, we live here. Think about that. We love what we do, it's not always pretty. We do our best, good school, not perfect. I want to give a shout out to these department chairs. So when it comes down to academic rigor, knowing the content, the discipline, these are the experts, these are the ones that train the new teachers, that hold the high standards, that say to students, not good enough, do it again. These department chairs are responsible for these awards. They'll make some comments as we call forward students. Two teachers are transitioning on to new opportunities, and I want to recognize them at this time. Our teacher, Mr. Nate Alexander. Where are you, Nate? Man, we love you. Get up. Stand up. Stand up. What, what a gift you have been to the Gal School. What a gift. We appreciate your talent, your creativity, your tolerance. We've never seen you rattled, and you live in Whitcomb. But as you go on to the Harvey School, let me tell you what it looks like for you. You will teach there, you will be recognized as a leader, you'll become a department chair, and you'll continue your excellent teaching. I'm really pleased to know that you started here at the Gauss School. And by the way, there's a position here for you when you're ready to come back. Yeah, yeah. Jared Wanglin, Mr. Wanglin, where are you? Yeah. So, well, now stand up. I want you to actually stand for this. So, uh, Jared grew up right down the road at Holland. Went to school. It wasn't the right place for you. You struggled. You found the Gauss School. You came here and you thrived as a student, all star student. Halfway through your career, hey, Mr. Rogers, I think I want to be a school teacher. Perfect. Go get a credential. He did. Get that credential, you got a job. Two great years here. So now you're going back to Holland where you started and you're going to show them how to teach our types of students the right way. That's awesome. And after a few years, you know what's going to happen? You're going to become a principal of the middle school. I can see it. And then maybe eight, nine, ten years from now, perhaps you're coming back home to be the next head of school. Maybe the number nine or number tenth. So proud of you. Go thrive. Show them how it's done. Congratulations. Thank you. So as I said, these awards are about academic achievement. Let's begin. The Excellence in Activities Award goes to that student who took part in several clubs and organizations, was enthusiastic about the many activities that took place on and off campus, and helped out their community. This student took full advantage of the many clubs and activities that are offered at Gauff. They were a leader on campus as an RA, was a member of Crimson Key, and was elected to serve on student council. This student helped to revive the culture committee and completed over twice the required community service hours. She took part in many trips that were offered throughout the school year and was my biggest advocate for even more than just curling trips. Due to her generosity, spirit, and enthusiastic participation in the opportunities the Gal School has to offer, it gives me great pleasure to present this year's Excellence in Activities Award to Rain Guttrell.
the excellence in academics. The students we're about to recognize have achieved their success because of their diligence and determination in both the classrooms and in study hall to earn honors grades. The following students have achieved an overall B average in their courses this year. Please, uh, students, please stand in your place and remain standing as your names are called. Please hold your applause audience until the names have been called. In the seventh grade, Anad Kenatharan. In the eighth grade, Emerson Landry, Jonathan Odom, and Jaden Singleton. In the ninth grade, Mobo Alalatu, Ashan Singh. In the 10th grade, Gabe Allen, Sarah Dalton, Ella Grantier, Jackson Liriano, PJ Rankin, Amelia Rumble, Nathan Teague. In the 11th grade, Will Fisher, Charlie Toff, Wyatt Whiten, Isaiah Whitman. In the 12th grade, Xavier Quintella, Aiden Dorenzio, Patrick Frawley, Adrian Joseph, Wyatt Cady, James Murch, Eagle Q, and Ryan Shea. Those are our merit award. Next, we would like to honor those students who earned an average of, gra of a grade of B plus or better. We ask that when your name is called students, please come forward and assemble on the floor in front of the stage, right out in here. Each of these students will receive a certificate in the mail in recognition of their accomplishments. Please hold your applause audience until all the names have been called. Honor roll, sixth grade, Cole Meyer, Ian Swanson. In the seventh grade, Julian Lujulier, Lena Rupp, Eve Woodcock. In the eighth grade, Shayna Friedman, Alana House, Jack Hood, Simon Ramos. In the ninth grade, JJ Claringbold, Silas Elsner, Summers Pitt, Connor Redman, Brian Riggerman, and Shea Simon. In the 10th grade, David Brocado, Tessa Bell Cabezas, Ronan Hunt, Finley Youngerman, Ju Young Kim, Grace Nolan, Giles Stambaugh, McKenna Thorpe, Anna Bay Vigil. In the 11th grade, Toby Atherton, Jules Ashton Blair, Caroline Brooke Bosley, Annalise Brower, Philip Dotterer, Jack Fitzpatrick, Noel Friel, Michael Yonke, Karen Lofton, Peter Mouse, Ruben Mohalan Shelfshin, uh, Josephine Ogilvy, Andrew Park. And in the 12th grade, Alexander Barr, James Brooke Bosley, Arrington Brown, Mark Burris, Seth Fish, Bennett Foster, Raina Cottrell, Riley Granahan, Merrick McDonald, Ewan McWiggan, Matthew Mercedi, Lauren David Morris, John Murch, and Oscar Plekis. Those are our honor roll. All right, you may be seated, students. Great job. In acknowledging the accomplishments of our honor students, we would be remiss if we did not mention that there are many other students who have made enormous strides in their academic development this year. The inspired efforts and improvements you have made are what the Gao School is really all about. Now I'd like to acknowledge the high GPA awards. These are two awards for a high grade point averages, two in the upper school and one in the middle school. Uh, to win this award, one must be motivated to do well in every class and enjoy the challenge of the academic rigor. These are bright, hardworking students who would take a very challenging course load. The recognition today will be the culmination of their hard work for the entire year. We don't have ties very often. In the upper school, the winners are Caroline Brooke Bosley with a 4.0 and Ruben Mohalan Shelfshin with a 4.0. All right, both of you come on up. Yep, yep, it's Caroline. Hold right there, hold right there. Hold oh, no, no, no. Come on over. 
Now, we only thought we were going to have one winner, so we only ordered one plate. So, uh, Caroline Brooke Bosley, I'm going to award you this plate, and Ruben, I know where you live. I'm going to ship you one myself. So, Caroline, what's up in the front? Okay. I'll give That's a lot of brains between those two. Uh, the winner in the middle school, we just have the one, Silas Elsner, also with a 4.0. The National Honor Society is a nationwide organization of student leaders representing the very highest order of scholarship, leadership, character, and service. From every corner of the United States, outstanding students are chosen for this elite group to be honored by the faculties of their schools through their nomination to the society. The Cursus Honorum is the Gal School chapter of the National Honor Society. I now ask the current members of Cursus Honorum to stand at their seats and be recognized. Mark Burris. Philip Dodderer, Rain Gattrell, Harrison Hanley, Kieran Lofton, James Murch, John Murch, Josephine Ogilvy, and Eagle Q. This year, we are pleased to accept the following new members. Please come to the stage and line up behind me as your name is called. In the National Honor Society, Toby Atherton, Seth Fish, Noel Friel, Ewan McWigan, Grace Nolan, Oscar Plekis, Amelia Rumble, and Anna Mae Vigil, and in the Junior Honor Society, Alana House. Cursus honorum is a Latin phrase referring to the course of responsible positions required of young leaders in ancient Rome. Like their ancient counterparts, these nominees must demonstrate and continue to, to display the highest level of scholarship, leadership, character, and service to their community. The current membership includes team captains, resident assistants, goodwill ambassadors, head waiters, and academic leaders. They serve in churches, clubs, and organizations outside of Gao. We look forward to seeing what this year's nominees will do as they join the ranks of their similarly exceptional peers across the country. Congratulations. I always edit my speeches. The 1989 Award for Excellence in the Fine Arts. This morning, at the beginning of our graduation week art exhibit, I was reminded of a story about the famous French painter Degas. As the story goes, one day, Degas and a few of his friends descended upon the Louvre. As his friends distracted the guards, Degas stepped over the barriers in front of the paintings, pulled out his brushes and some paints, and added a few more details to one of his paintings that was already hanging on the walls of the Louvre. Do you understand? His painting was already 
hanging in the Louvre. Well, this morning, 15 minutes after our art exhibit had begun, you would have found the Gao School's version of Degas still sitting on a stool with his paints and markers in his hand, adding details to his final painting that was already hanging on the walls of our exhibit. I got quite a laugh. I wonder what museums may eventually have to put up with him sitting there touching up his own paintings on their walls. But as I remember, things didn't start quite like that. Our current award winner started out just barely scraping by. He was argumentative, and he was just chock full of intelligent, sophisticated excuses, but no artwork. His only talent was like a weasel, finding and squeezing through the cracks in our system, and find them he did. <laughs> but then we started to hear rumors about this same student. While the sun was up in the presence of his teachers, he acted as though he could simply take or leave art. But then, after a big show of seeming not to care, he would stay up sometimes to two and three in the morning painting, and his paintings started to trickle down into our classrooms. Of course, they were not the paintings he was assigned to do. He would never have thought to do those. Um, rather, they were paintings he simply wanted to do. Still, either way, they were very good, and they kept piling up. Eventually, incredibly, he even started painting, of all things, in our classroom during his actual class time, and during study halls, then first lunch, then all my prep periods, some of which I really could have used, in every tutorial for months on end, and practically any time he could find the door to the painting studio open. But one door closes and another opens. Things are about to change. Just a day or so from now, after the graduation ceremony is over, and the last of our students trickle out of the dining hall doors, I will be sitting in the painting studio waiting as the last few families come to pick up their children's artwork. Eventually, for me, it will become very quiet, a rare type of peace that only occurs once a year. Now I'll know that it is time for even me to leave. Still, as I turn out the classroom's lights for the last time this year, I know I will not be able to help myself from reflexively looking around my room, for it may be the first time in a long time that I will not find Xavier Cantella happily ensconced somewhere in my classroom, even as the lights are going out. It comes as no surprise to anyone this year that Xavier Cantella will be receiving our 2023 version of the Award for Excellence in the Fine Arts. As we all say goodbye, both Xavier and all his past and present arts teachers can rest assured everyone has contributed to his job well done. We will be expecting great things from him. Xavier. There was no shortage of musical talent on campus this year, which truly made it hard to choose a person to win this award. There were students who were new to playing an instrument, but made tremendous progress and showed true dedication. There were other students who had a lot of natural ability and a great passion for music. So who do you choose? In the end, the student who was chosen is one who not only has natural talent in music, but has also shown a great amount of dedication. He has played piano, guitar, bass guitar, drums, and ukulele in my classroom. 
He has participated in different musical groups such as church choirs, small bands, duets, and some solos. He has put in extra time in the practice rooms and volunteered to perform at different events around campus. He has been a positive influence in the music room and has been encouraging to younger students by helping them to learn more about the guitar and music in general. I am pleased to present this year's music award to Wyatt Whiten. The Kathleen N. Rose Reconstructive Language Awards, named in honor of the Gow School's longtime Reconstructive Language Department Chair, are presented to two students, one from the middle school and one from the upper school, who have demonstrated not only a strong work ethic, perseverance, and grit, but also an enthusiasm for reconstructive language. According to Mrs. Chafin, the recipient of this year's middle school award demonstrated excellence both in and out of her reconstructive language class, but it didn't happen immediately. This school year was the students first at Gao, and they had to learn to manage their homework and needed encouragement to complete assignments in the proper format. That's code for using cursive, by the way. Eventually, the middle school recipient started to buy into RL. They started shuffling their RL cards every Monday and then worked through the deck to make sure they knew all their cards. The middle school recipient used this method to memorize their phonics, roots, and spellable flashcards, and the student never stopped practicing. The middle school recipient even established a friendly competition with their classmates, which helped motivate everyone to do their best. Mrs. Chafin adds that this student's progress and dedication were rewarding to watch. The recipient of this year's upper school award is a senior who has consistently impressed their RL teachers over the years with their strong work ethic and friendly, upbeat disposition. I had the privilege of teaching this student this year. They always turned in their assignments on time and prepared well for tests and quizzes. I've truly enjoyed every interaction I've ever had with this student. Over their time here at Gao, they've made noticeable improvements in their literacy skills. For the RL teachers, it's been so rewarding to see this student's growth. It is my honor to present this year's Kathleen N. Rose Reconstructive Language Awards to Brian Riggerman in the middle school and Bennett Foster in the upper school. The Gao School English Awards are presented to those students who have demonstrated outstanding personal growth in writing and a commitment to studying literature. The winner of this year's Upper, Upper School Writing Award was a key contributor to the Gao School's student publication, The Govian. From the first day of school, the student was the sponge for all the material introduced in class. He followed the steps of the writing process for all of his articles, and this student was also a valuable peer editor for his fellow Govian writers. It didn't matter what the topic was assigned by Mr. Meyer or one of his own choosing. He methodically researched his topic, organized his research, and carefully and thoughtfully wrote well-organized, informative, and entertaining articles for the Govian. The Middle School English Award winner performed admirably in English 7 from the first day of the school year to the last. She worked diligently daily to improve her understanding and use of the concepts and methods of descriptive writing. 
She also completed every homework assignment on time to the best of her abilities, and she wrote well in various genres, from imagery-driven poems with plenty of poetic devices and descriptive meaning to descriptive and reflective paragraphs and essays. The student's greatest accomplishment was her personal connection to poetry. She wrote many thoughtful poems in various forms. Her enthusiastic attitude towards writing helped her excel in class, and she was instrumental in providing meaningful feedback to her peers. It gives me great pleasure to present the Upper School English Award to Jack Fitzpatrick, and it gives me great pleasure to present the Middle School English Award to Lena Rupp. I'm here to present the Upper and Middle School Science Awards. The Upper School Science Award recipient came to Gao late and hit the advanced science courses as soon as he arrived. He was like a sponge, quickly soaking up information. In the courses he took, he exhibited an, an amazing quality to be, being able to digest technical information and explain it in a different way for others in the class. After that, he needed little guidance on his assignments. In advanced biology, Mr. Hazen was impressed with this recipient's deep understanding of topics covered, including especially genetics. This student's work has been described as punctual, very thorough, and highly detailed. The recipient of the Middle School Science Award spent her first year at Gao studying Mr. Gullo's STEAM science class and she performed well on every activity that Mr. Gullo could throw at her, whether it was working on the CNC machine, wiring the Arduino, dissecting an eyeball, or even just taking a test. This student was always engaged. She is described as thorough, methodical, hardworking, and attentive. Both inside and outside of class, this student was never afraid to ask a question, share an opinion, or challenge an idea. In fact, while competing at the 28th annual high school bridge competition, she as an eighth grader successfully challenged the judges by presenting evidence to boost her case and was able to earn seventh overall, allowing her and her partner to beat over 90% of the competition. I, Mr. Gullo, and the rest of the science department are excited to see what this student brings to the table in the future. The Upper School Science Award goes to Lauren Morris and the middle school to Shana Friedman. This is the History Award. Lao Tzu once said, knowing others is intelligence, but knowing yourself is wisdom. The study of history is a journey of self-discovery. The nominees for the History Award are true historians. They see things differently than the others do. Humble, patient, curious, they want to know why things happened and why it matters. They are wise beyond their years because they have listened to and reflected upon the myriad experiences of those who came before. Just as great athletes train their bodies, they train their souls. Mr. Salerno had the opportunity to work with this year's recipient of the Middle School History Award in his eighth grade American history class. Mr. Salerno described this student 
as inquisitive and a diligent student of history. They worked hard to strengthen their critical thinking, reading, and writing skills. They demonstrated a natural appreciation for American history, valued opposing ideas, and were consistently willing to put forth the effort required by the course. This student constantly added background knowledge to the class discussions and sought out additional information on their own free time with the intention of sharing it with the class. I am proud to present the Middle School History Award to Simon Ramos. In the upper school, Mr. Dietz and I taught this year's recipient previously. They were an excellent student in class. They eagerly engaged in class activities and came out of their shell to contribute meaningful comments to class discussions, often much more complicated than was necessary. In advanced humanities this year, they actively sought out information to integrate into their current knowledge. This student easily makes connections between ideas, and they find humor in contradictions. Their sharp wit and critical thinking abilities were, to, were particularly evident when the class studied logical fallacies. Intrigued by the disparity in viewership between television series with different amounts of brutality, this student chose the topic of society's acceptance of violence for their senior honors thesis. I am proud to present the Upper School History Award to Matthew Mercedes. the Applied Technology Award. The lower school recipient of the Applied Technology Award showed improvement with his computer skills and a great deal of interest in the world of coding and robotics. This young man came to class every day with his own brand of excitement and energy. Often, he would act like the reluctant leader, but everyone knew he relished the position. He may not have loved speaking in front of the class during his PowerPoint presentations, but he always did very well with their construction. During the coding units and VEX Robotics, his problem-solving abilities were on full display. He always approached game development and the robot course with creative, outside-of-the-box approaches. Mr. Chafin hopes that he remains in the Applied Technology program throughout his high school years. He would love to see him eventually building robots for the school to compete. As teachers, it is always a difficult job to nominate one student out of so many qualified candidates for the Applied Technology Award at the upper school level. But one student stood out from the rest with his consistency and curiosity. He chose to take CNC Robotics with Mr. Poblaki and Mr. Lindahl in his senior year and quickly demonstrated his proficiency and passion for this challenging course. This student always turned in his class paperwork on time and at a very high quality with attention to detail. He was very attentive to every instruction and feedback and always strived to improve his work. This student was curious about why things worked the way they do. He always wanted to dig deeper into the topic to understand its fundamentals. 
by asking insightful questions and conducting independent research to expand his knowledge. He was not satisfied with just following the steps, but wanted to understand the logic and the principles behind them. These are great qualities for an engineer. This year's recipients of the Applied Technology Award is Connor Rebman in the middle school and Ewan McWiggan in the upper school. The Tracy Mathematics Award is presented to those students who demonstrate overall improvement and academic growth in the field of mathematics. While these students may not receive the highest grades in their respective math classes, they have displayed grit, determination, and a desire to advance their skills. They, deserve the, they persevere by getting extra help from their teachers and by making corrections to assignments, tests, and quizzes to improve not only their grades, but their understanding of the material as well. This year's middle school recipient of the award often came uh, from Mr. Ro often came from Mr. Rothfuss's pre-algebra class, where the students started the year by often expressing how difficult each assignment was. But as a result, the student would often ask questions during class and would not simply settle for a single explanation if concepts escaped her understanding. The student attended tutorial as much as as, as was allowed, and sometimes Mr. Rothfuss would have to set a limit for the sake of the other classes. Over time, the students' remarks evolved from, I just can't do this problem, uh, or this is too hard, into, I think I get it, and then eventually to, yep, I've got this. This work ethic, perseverance, and teachability in the classroom has made it a pleasure to see her gain confidence, ability, and skills in every area of math throughout the year. Her achievements throughout the course were easily seen in, uh, in her never wavering grades despite the increasingly challenging content. The upper school recipient has developed a reputation for being conscientious and a hard worker. The student skills have come a long way since completing developmental mathematics a few years ago. As a 10th grade, 10th grade student in Mr. Lindell's Algebra 2 class, the student has demonstrated enthusiasm for the course and asked questions to deepen his understanding of the material. Mathematics has not come easy for the student, but he regularly submitted his homework on time and attended tutorial often for assistance. While maintaining and improving his grade, his use of carefully written notes helped the student to gradually become more independent throughout the school year. He has developed strong study skills and has made good use of the resources available to him. The student also managed to increase uh, his result on the Stanford Achievement Test by over two grade levels since last year. It gives me great pleasure to award this year's Tracy Mathematics Awards to, in the middle school, Eve Woodcock, and in the upper school, Gabe Allen. The Foreign Language Award. As we conclude another academic year, I was given the difficult task of selecting the recipient of the 11th Annual Foreign Language Award. This award is presented to that student who has demonstrated exceptional growth and improvement in a foreign language class. This student has completed two years of Spanish here at the Gallup School, and each year he has tried to increase his knowledge of the language, along with doing extra work outside of class, including joining the Spanish club. He has shown great effort over the last two years. He is always willing to participate in all activities, and he is always trying to improve his fluency in the language. He truly personifies the concept of God being a level playing field where effort and desire to learn yields positive results. It is my honor and privilege to announce that this year's Foreign Language Award goes to Kieran Lofton.
the Jeffrey S. Sweet Outstanding Freshman Award. This award, named in honor of Jeffrey S. Sweet, middle school head emeritus, is presented to that ninth grade student who has worked hard in the classroom, been active in athletics, and has contributed to creating a positive atmosphere and a successful school year. This year's recipient, in my opinion, and I'm sure that of uh, Mr. Sweet as well, epitomizes what it means to be a Govian. Uh, for any student, middle school or upper school, new or veteran, it takes time to adjust to our many schedules, daily routines, and very deliberate structure. Each year, by design, the academic rigor becomes more demanding. All of this, combined with adapting to being away from home and learning how to advocate for yourself, never becomes an entirely easy endeavor. This student, however, with all the confidence and enthusiasm you could hope for, is bearing and daring. Highly active in our student activities and serving as a ninth grade representative on our student council, this student sought out ways to increase her grade's engagement, or as she would put it, boost fun. She's also highly active in our athletics programs, participating on our modified soccer, varsity wrestling, and varsity lacrosse teams. Much of what she does at GAO, uh, she leads by example and sheer and utter drive of will. Few ninth grade students possess this level of drive and positive demeanor. Most importantly though, she's kind to everyone she encounters. Her classmates and teachers enjoy her company and very quick wit. I have really enjoyed my opportunity to work with her this past year, and like all here, have high expectations for her next three years. No pressure, Shay. I'm extremely pleased to present this year's Jeffrey S. Sweet Outstanding Freshman Award to Shay Simon. Each year, it is my distinct honor to present the Outstanding Sophomore Award in, named in the memory of Randy Hoffer. This one's very special to me. I had the pleasure of coaching and working with Randy for two years. He was a hardworking student and a gifted athlete, but most of all, he was a wonderful person whose charming personality brought everyone in our small community closer together. This year's recipient of the award hails from Phoenix, Arizona, and is completing her first year at GAO. A straight-A student who earned the honor scroll pri privilege each marking period for which she was eligible, she is the embodiment of kindness and respect. Whether she was posting messages of encouragement on the bathroom mirror, singing a duet with a friend about self-love, handing out Easter treats, or planning fun activities in the dorm, she was truly an ambassador of positivity. Her dorm parents both describe her as caring with a heart of gold. Her roommate describes her as the best mix of a wisdom of a mature parent and the carefree enthusiasm of a 10-year-old child. She is both a light and a delight. Randy Hoffer would be proud, and so am I. It gives me great pleasure to present this year's Randall P. Hoffer Outstanding Sophomore Award to Finley Youngerman. Sorry, you're stuck with me for two more. The McCallum Family Bursary Award is given by John McCallum, class of 92, and his family to Canadian citizens who have worked hard to achieve the goals to be an outstanding GAO student. Imagine being Canadian and attending a boarding school just outside Buffalo, New York. As someone who took this particular leap 25 years ago, I can tell you it's not always easy. Everybody thinks you end every sentence with A, Apparently our accents are funny and we don't know how to pronounce out and about. And we say things like route and schedule. It's exhausting at times. All we want to do is lay low and not be noticed. 
I think this year's recipient feels my pain. A new ninth grader from Barrie, Ontario, measuring in at six foot three, and a somewhat gregarious young man, it's not easy for him to lay low. Please join me in congratulating this year's winner, Ishan Singh. The Gao School Canadian Scholarship is awarded to that Canadian student who has demonstrated outstanding citizenship and dedication to academic achievement. This year's recipient is from Hamilton, Ontario, and he maintained a straight A average with a challenging schedule that included honors journalism with Mr. Meyer, U.S. history with Mr. Dietz, and geometry with Mr. Bray. His citizenship over the past two years has been exemplary. His work as a resident assistant was much appreciated, and his leadership will no doubt come into play next year. It is my honor, O-U-R, to present this year's Canadian scholarship to Ruben Mulholland Zofchin. In memory of David Hoskins, class of 1976, this award is presented to recognize that student who has demonstrated outstanding loyalty to the Gao School. It is my honor to award the David Hoskins Award to Josephine Ogilvy. The Dubin Gutkin Award, created by Michael and Sandra Gutkin in honor of their parents and to recognize the importance of a Gao education for their son Jonathan, class of 2001, is known as the Dubin Gutkin Award. Chosen by faculty, this award recipient has demonstrated excellence in math, science, or applied technology. It is my honor to present this year's award to David Pregato. The Walton Family Foundation Award is given by the Walton Family Foundation, which is presented to Govians who have recognized their potential and have worked with discipline and determination to achieve it. It gives me enormous pleasure to present this award to Toby Atherton. The Creighton B. Merch Award, in honor of Creighton B. Merch, a class of 1963, parent of students in class of 2023. This award is presented to a student who has demonstrated a consistent effort to achieve academically and to be a positive contributor to the Gao School community. It is my pleasure to present this award to Gabe Allen.
teachable moment. Um, this is a day of school. Three guys came in about 35 minutes late. Please see me after this class. You know who you are. It's accountability. This is the uh, Jim Grenauer Award, class of 1955. Semper Fi, sir. Come on up here. Always faithful. We're lucky enough to have Mr. Grenauer with us. He's going to help me present this. So, Mr. Grenauer, I know, come on. Good to be with a fellow Marine. Thank you. This, this award was created by your friends and your family. Actually, it was created by my daughter, Ellie. She got this brilliant idea that uh, since I love Gauss School so much that uh, we should have an award for a uh, Buffalo student. Uh, and uh, so that's what happened. We uh, had a fundraiser uh, at, the, at, the, at our restaurant, which is in Williamsville. And uh, I don't know, went on for a couple of years. And, you know, we raised, I guess, as much as $12,000. And then uh, Gail and my daughter got together and they brought it to Gow School and it just bloomed. So we're very happy that uh, we started with our little uh, Gow School Fund at, at uh, um, excuse me, Glen Park Tavern. Thank you. Don't go away. That's not done so well anyway. <laughs> We're doing great. This award is a given to a student whose hard work and refusal to fail, as quoted from Mr. Grenauer, has allowed them to achieve their academic goals. I'm pleased to present this award to Cole Meyer. We're going to give it to him right out front here. So, you know, uh, I'm so enthused with this presentation. I want to come back to Gal. I think, I think Brad has done an outstanding job, and I've seen a lot of headmasters at Gal School since 1955. But there is nobody that I can think of that has done the kind of work that he's achieved in his faculty. They are just outstanding, and let's all stand up and give them a hand. Oh. Jim, thank you for being here. Thank you for recognizing these great teachers. They deserve it, for sure. So um, we will finish up this presentation. Moms and dads, this is for you. Special appreciations to the parents, to the siblings, to the extended family for making this happen for your loved ones. We are a school about reading development. We are a school serving students with dyslexia and related language-based learning disabilities. That's not an easy journey at moments. We are also a school about grace. We're a school about social development. And we are a school about self-advocacy. We do our best to demystify the learning style and learning profile of each of our students so they can go on to university and college and be their own advocates to speak for themselves, talking about their strengths, their weaknesses, their needs in school and life beyond. I'm so proud of the students, proud of the teachers. It really is a celebration, and tomorrow is about these seniors. And by the way, some of you seniors, you can come to the senior dinner tonight if your rooms check out, because right now, some of them aren't good enough. Take care of business. We'll ask everybody to be mindful of our campus cell phone policy. 
This device is powerful and it is taking away the social engagement that is so desperate and so needed. So I invite all of us to model the good citizenship, the eye contact, face-to-face -face engagement, cell phones of the right time and the right place. To the returning students, great moment now to set a goal. What award do you want to earn next year? Is it math? Is it technology? Is it citizenship? Set a goal because your turn will be soon. Also, students, last time you hear me say this here, wear your seatbelts. Anytime you get in, click it. Front seat, back seat, always. So tomorrow's commencement will begin promptly at 10 o'clock for these 32 candidates. These doors open at 9. All students should be in the theater at 9 a.m. in uniform. We will robe up. There'll be some photo opportunities. We will have a few moments, moms and dads, just the students and the teachers privately in the theater before we parade. You'll hear the bagpipes. You'll get the chills. It'll be right here. It's about a two-hour event. Each one of the seniors will share their speeches, their comments, and that is not an easy task. But their words must be heard. Their speeches must be shared. So I just ask us all to be patient and use our social grace to lift them up while they deliver those speeches. Should be about a two-hour event, and then there's lunch. The class of 2023 has six legacies in it. We will celebrate with some fun those legacies. The senior dinner starts tonight at 6. It's country club casual. Parents, if you take your child off campus tonight, please make eye contact with the dorm parents so we know they are in your care. They must be back on campus by 9 o'clock tomorrow morning in uniform. Students on campus, dinner is the regular time, 545, dinner dress. Dorm curfew tonight, 7 p.m. in the dorms. Dorm parents, I ask you to take a head count for accountability. Good afternoon.